We all know the story. A nation, spurred on by a president's impossible promise, built a machine to touch the moon. We see the photos, read the history books, and feel that familiar swell of pride. But what's often lost in the grandeur is a deeper, more profound truth. The Saturn V wasn't a perfect machine. It was a monument to compromise, an object lesson in the brutal, beautiful art of the trade-off. Every inch of that 363-foot-tall rocket was a series of agonizing decisions. Every pound of aluminum and every drop of liquid oxygen was a battle between two warring ideals, power and reliability. To meet President Kennedy's deadline, engineers didn't have the luxury of optimizing every component. They had to make sacrifices. They had to take risks. And sometimes, the only way forward was to choose the lesser of two evils. This is the story of those hidden trade-offs. The moments when a handful of men working in windowless rooms had to decide what they were willing to sacrifice to get us to the moon. At the heart of the Saturn V were five F-1 engines, each a monster of its time. No rocket engine before or since has produced more thrust from a single nozzle. But this power didn't come easily. The sheer scale of it created a problem that nearly killed the entire Apollo program, combustion instability. Imagine a fire hose connected to a million horsepower pump. You're not just dealing with pressure. You're dealing with immense, unpredictable turbulence. In the combustion chamber of the F-1, liquid oxygen and kerosene were injected and ignited at an unbelievable rate. The goal was a smooth, stable burn. The reality was a chaotic storm. Unpredictable pressure waves would build up, feeding on each other like a runaway avalanche. If these waves became strong enough, they could vibrate the engine apart in a fraction of a second, sometimes before it even left the pad. Engineers at Rocketdyne described it as a screaming phenomenon. They built engine after engine, only to watch them tear themselves to pieces on the test stand. It wasn't a problem you could solve with more brute force. This was a fundamental fight against the laws of physics. The solution was a perfect example of the trade-off. They designed the injector plate with radial baffles dividing the injector face, structural barriers that broke up destructive pressure waves before they could grow. It was a brilliant solution, but it came at a cost. Added complexity, manufacturing challenges, and some incremental weight. Every ounce counted. Every exotic weld was another potential point of failure. But the alternative, a rocket that exploded on the launch pad, was a price no one was willing to pay. They traded a little performance for a monumental gain in reliability. It was a choice between efficiency and existence. They chose existence. The Saturn V was, at its heart, a stack of fuel tanks. The first stage, the S-1C, carried over 4.7 million pounds of kerosene and liquid oxygen. The second stage, the S-2, held liquid hydrogen, the lightest, coldest fuel ever used in a booster this size. 
The structure holding it all together couldn't be heavy. Every extra pound of aluminum was a pound that required more fuel to lift, creating a cascade effect. This led to another key trade-off. Materials. They couldn't use heavy-gauge steel. Instead, they relied on advanced aluminum alloys, strong for their weight, but temperamental. These alloys were prone to cracking and extremely difficult to weld at scale. The solution was pioneering variable polarity TIG welding, a brand new technique at the time, which allowed thin aluminum joints to be fused with unprecedented precision. Entire factories were built around perfecting those welds because a single flaw could destroy the rocket under the stresses of launch. And then there was the nightmare of insulation. The S2 stage carried liquid hydrogen at minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit, sitting directly above a liquid oxygen tank at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. Instead of using two bulkheads and the structural weight they implied, engineers squeezed the tanks together and used a radical common bulkhead, a single wall separating the two propellants. This wall was two domed sheets of aluminum separated by a honeycomb layer filled with insulation. Lightweight. Ingenious, but terrifying. If a seam cracked, if the insulation failed, liquid hydrogen could boil away or liquid oxygen could freeze solid. The entire rocket depended on a few inches of foam and metal. It was lighter, yes, but it was also fragile, unproven, and extremely unforgiving. The wager was simple. Mass savings in exchange for razor-thin margins of safety. The Saturn V cannot be separated from the clock under which it was built. President Kennedy's challenge, to land a man on the moon before the decade was out, wasn't just a goal. It was an ultimatum, and every trade-off was made under the shadow of that ticking clock. Engineers asked themselves daily, could they spend another six months perfecting a part knowing it might push them past the deadline, or press ahead with something good enough and hope it held. One compromise was in testing. The rocket had more than three million individual parts. Testing every single resistor, every transistor, Every valve was functionally impossible. Instead, they relied on statistical sampling. They tested batches, not every component, accepting quantifiable risk to keep the assembly lines moving. Major systems, engines, stages, guidance computers, were heavily tested, yes, but the smaller parts? Good enough had to be good enough. And then came the biggest compromise of all, how to get to the moon itself. The early plan was direct ascent, one colossal spacecraft going all the way down and back. The trouble, it demanded a rocket far larger than even the Saturn V. Enter John Howbolt, an engineer who pushed the unthinkable. Lunar orbit rendezvous, two vehicles instead of one. A command module in orbit, a lander for the surface, a risky rendezvous in lunar orbit. It seemed insane, more complicated, more dangerous. But it fit within the Saturn V's lift capacity, and it fit within the deadline. That compromise turned out to be the key that unlocked the moon. The Saturn V never failed in flight. 15 launches, and no crew ever lost to a booster malfunction. But this flawless record was not the result of perfection. It was the result of compromise, hard, uncomfortable, razor's edge compromises. The insulation that might have cracked, the welds that might have failed, the parts that never saw a test bench, 
the rendezvous maneuver that might not have worked. These pressures were carried not by machines, but by the engineers who designed them. They accepted those risks consciously, staring failure in the face and choosing to press on. Every time 5F1 engines lit the Cape Canaveral sky, it wasn't just a triumph of engineering. It was a vindication of those trade-offs. A rocket that wasn't flawless, but was just good enough, and good enough turned out to be historic. The Saturn V stands as a monument not to perfection, but to the brutal, necessary art of compromise. Flawed, fragile, breathtaking, and because of those very flaws, a more human machine. Thank you.